Hello there everyone and welcome to the C Sharp Trash Course. In this episode we're going to be covering loops and if statements. And we're going to be doing that using our my class that we did before. And in the previous episode I used a while loop for this counter. So we're going to be going through a few things. I'm going to start by deleting that and we're going to split this into different categories. We're going to start with an if statement, then we're going to do a for loop, then we're going to do a while loop. These are going to be the three things I'm going to be covering in this episode. There are other loops such as the for each loop, but I'll be covering those possibly in the future. Depends if it pops up or not. So an if statement is, well, the if is a keyword that is used to decide whether code should run or not if the conditions are met. So if we can do done is equal to false. So this will run if uh, done isn't set to true. And we're going to just do, we're going to write the starting string and whatnot to the console and then we'll write uh, the then we'll set done to true so if done equals false we'll write that so the console done equals true so this will only run once then what you can do is an else statement so if this is set to true you can run some code here so let's do a for loop. Actually, before I do that, there's else and else if. You can do else if done is equal to true. And you can keep doing else statements. This one's an impossible one that's going to appear. Oh, well, actually, that's a lie. They both can activate. But you can keep doing else if statements uh, throughout and you can end with else and this is just a if none of the above statements are true run this but we're just going to set an if else just because a done can either be true or false so else now we can do a for loop so a for takes in a it's basically used as its own sort of counter. So I'm going to do int i equals zero. So this is going to be its starting index. Then while i is less than 60. So while this i value is less than 60, this is going to run. But we need a way to increment this i. So we're going to do i plus plus. Now this will increment i by one each cycle. So go zero, one, two, three, through to 59. It won't do 60. If you want it to do 60, you do less than or equals to. But less than seems to be the better way to go. So we're going to do counter equals i. I'll do console.writeline of count string and we'll put in counter so now that will go through set counter equal to i it will write that to thing and then once done we'll exit this update loop so i'm going to put at the top of this the phrase called because this be called when this is done then it will call a second time when this is completed and then we're going to do a while loop so I'm just going to do a second done all and what we're going to do is Another if statement if counter is greater than 
or equal to uh I'll tell you what let's do counter plus plus here just so it sets it to 60 after the fact even though I said uh do less than or equal to is greater than or equal to 60 and and counter is less than or equal to let's do 300 now we're going to do a while loop so while actually we could sort of do this as its own loop do counter plus plus console dot byte line count count string counter and then finally we'll do if counter is greater than or equal to 300 we'll do while counter is not equal to 400 counter plus plus console dot byte line count string counter so what this will do is while the counter is not equal to 400 this will keep looping uh, you'll need to make sure that during the while loop this condition is set otherwise you will end up in an infinite loop and the program will just stop running so over here i'm going to put back in my update now we're going to look at the console we're going to see it well it's going to first say it's called then it's going to write this it's going to say called again then it's going to loop through this and write that then it's not going to say called it's going to go to this and then this is going to increment by one then it will keep you doing called this called this until this hits uh 300 and finally this will be called and then it'll be done so let's run the program and you can see it in action the time is set to zero and for whatever reason the code is not working that's because i only have it called once i was meant to do something else uh this is why we had that done too we're going to do a while loop here and then we can run it as you can see counting up but downside is it's resetting oh no that's why i has been set here let's do an if statement if i say so if counter is is less than 60 we'll run this code there we go that should fix that issue that's was my bad for making a mistake as you can see we've gone through see so it says called time is set to zero called then it's doing this for loop which i i know that's right so as you can see at this point it's just finished the for loop because we don't have it right in what 60 is it skips that and we're gone if count is greater than or equal to 60 count is less than 300 dot count plus plus and as you can see this being called each time because it's in the if statement as we scroll through you'll see it continues then we get to the uh 299 then we get into if is greater than or equal to 300 then we go through 301 read 400 this is set to true and it stops so now if i press enter i don't know why it didn't work first time it will close so 
I'm going to just comment what some of these do. I'm going to do it like this. Then if condition, condition, else if condition, else if condition, else. This is also the order it checks. So if this condition is met, it will do this one first. If this one isn't true, it will then check if this one is true or not, if this condition is met. If that one isn't, it moves to the next one. If none of the conditions are met, then it moves to the else statement. It goes in the order you write them. Otherwise, it's be a bit weird. You can't just go, let's say if done is equal to true here. No, let's say if counter is equal to 300 here is less than 300 here is less than 400 here no sorry yeah less than 400 here this one would still be called despite this one checking number earlier basically this won't be called uh, until the number equals 400 this one will never be called even though the number will be less than 300 so a for variable uh, equals, these are usually numbers, so we're going to do equals number variable condition or then do you condition here, they do increment, so an example of this was the where variable equals int i equals zero condition was i is less than 60 increment was i plus plus you also want to make sure you have a semicolon after each one of these except the increment one otherwise this will not work And finally, you've got the while loop, so while condition run loop code, then ensure condition is met during this loop. You cannot set a the condition outside the loop. I'll show you why in this example. I've moved the counter outside the while loop, so the counter would be incremented after the while loop. But as you'll see, it's just going to continue saying 300. This is an infinite loop now. And there's no way to end the code. So there we go. That's the basics of if, for, and while conditions. Uh, you'll be using these a few different ways. The if statement is usually used to check whether conditions are met. For is to usually loop through arrays and stuff like that so you can get specific indexes. And the while loop is usually used to make your code run a specific section of code multiple times like in the program i have it just call in the my update method until this is set to true and yeah that's the basics of loops there is four of each loops as well i'm going to sort of write these down uh an example would be for each int i in let's say we have an array of ints so we do int array so what this is basically is a for in i equals zero i is less than int array dot length i plus plus then where i is basically equal to and you do let's do int j equals int array i so basically this is a shorthand way of doing this 
is again each of the indexes in the array. Whereas in this one, we're looping through each number and we have to get the index itself from here. I'll cover four of each loops if it ever comes up in the future. But hopefully this has helped you understand if statements and loops. Hopefully you'll be able to apply them into whatever project you're working on. So thank you everyone for watching. I hope this has been helpful. Until the next episode, thanks for watching and goodbye.